Hey guys, it's Henry again. I'm doing another tutorial for you today, and this one is about designing this bench. So, what we're going to do is go over the topology, the geometry, the concrete here, the wooden planks, and then we're going to texture it and UV map it as well. We need two UV maps, I'll show you how I do it. But without further ado, let's just jump straight into it, yeah? So, what we're going to do is start up Blender. Now, if you didn't follow my previous tutorial on setting up the user interface, we should already be set up. So all we will have to do is just jump straight into modeling. So the first thing I do, which you don't have to follow, let me turn my screencast keys on, is just grab it in edit mode, which is you press tab to get in and out of edit mode, by the way. Let me turn this down. I think it might be a little bit too loud. Okay, so anyway, yeah, you jump in and out of edit mode by pressing tab. As you can see down here, it tells you. So anything I'm doing, it will follow. Ignore the one because that was just an accident. Yeah, so tab in and out. Okay. I go into edit mode. Press G to grab this. And then I want to move it straight up. So I can press Z and then hold control, which will move up and down one of these squares, which is the Mia. Okay, so once I've got it at this point, my pivot point is now down here underneath so if I want to stretch it up I just go straight up whereas if I do it like this it stretches both sides which is why I like it there you don't have to but yeah okay so the next thing we're going to want to do is scale it in at the moment size isn't an issue so it doesn't matter if it's too big or too small I'm going to press control and up to make my whole window big right now we're going to start modeling the curves into this now I think what we're going to do is bring it down to about here. Add a loop cut by pressing Ctrl and R. And with a loop cut, if you rest your cursor, this cursor that's jumping about, on an edge, the loop cut will add on the edge. So up, so this edge here will go down, this edge across, this edge across, and so on and so on. Okay, so we're going to left click and then drag it to about here. So now we have that. And now we can extrude this part of the concrete. So we'll extrude that. We don't have to move it back straight away. We can do, just so press G and Y to bring it back. Okay, the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is add about four loop cuts. Four? Yeah, let's start with six loop cuts. Again, press Ctrl and R, and then press 6 to add the loop cuts into it. Once that's done, right click, and it will just store in the position where it first started out. Okay, now as you can see, this comes down as well, so we're going to have to add the same amount of loop cuts this way. So we can get that sort of a curve. I'll add a few here as well, so right click again, Ctrl R, drag it down. Stay three. Yep. Add three loop cuts, right click. Okay, now that's a good starting point for us. So what we're gonna do is press five to get into orthographic view. And we're gonna do three to go into the right orthographic view. And then we're gonna start doing this curve here. So what we're going to do is find the middle one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so halfway between eight is there. We can add another loop cut, which I have just done. And press zero. Uh, sorry, uh, O for orange. I'm going to want a G. And you'll notice now that we can do proportional editing, which moves uh, several different vertices, not just one. We're going to press Y. And bring it back to about there and again this doesn't have to be perfect we're in the blocking out stages at the moment so it isn't going to be perfect so what we're going to do is just bring that that way down a bit and then the same here same thing ah uh, yeah okay so we're starting to get a bit of a shape We're going to want to edit these individually, so bring it in, select them to by right clicking, bring it in, right click on these two, bring them in a bit, and bring it in, one more, 
Okay. Alright, now as you can see we've got a pull shape here, so what we're going to do is press T to open up the left transform toolbar. Click on smooth and as you'll see it looks disgusting. That is because the smooth shade is, sorry for swearing, but it's crap, so I'm not going to swear, I'm just going to say crap instead. Okay, so now what we do, what I did here, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. We go to modifiers, add a modifier and we add an edge split. We'll split the vertices to make the edges look more smooth, as you can see here. So this is flat, as you can see, each face, this is smooth. Now if we turn off edge split, this is smooth and this is flat, okay? So we want to keep this on. Anyway, the next step we're going to do is just start to edit a bit, get a bit of a smooth transition going. I'll probably add another... Yeah, we've got a smooth transition going through. I'm not too sure about how long this transition should be. But that shouldn't be there. In fact, it should. I see what I've done now. Is okay. Now we're starting to get a bit of a shape, it's coming into play. We just want to finalize the shape before we start adding the planks and whatnot. And get a smooth transition between this curve here, as you can see, it's a smooth transition. At the moment, I'm just, if you're following along, I know it's a bit quick, but I'm pressing G, adding loop cuts, and just moving it about. Okay, so we've got a smooth transition now. I think this is a bit too large. We might need to bring it up a little. Yeah, that looks about right. We're going to have another one curve coming at the back, but first of all, we're going to add in the gap, which I'd say, yeah, it's be about from there to there. So, here, it's about right here. It's got one more just to be safe, right? Now what we're going to do now is delete those faces. We don't need them. De delete the faces, sorry. I press C to go into object mode, so I can select both sides. Edit uh, wireframe mode, sorry. And then press B, drag the box across, and that selects them. If you don't want to do that, just press C, same process. Just select all the vertices until it's all orange like so, and delete the faces. All right, now we're gonna to wanna to close these. So again, wireframe mode, make sure four vertices are selected at that one point. You can individually right click, which will take a lot longer. But in all, I find this way is a lot quicker. So you press Z, do that. That's one, two, plus two behind is four. Press F to fill the face, same again there. F to fill the face. F to fill a face, F to fill a face, yeah, and the last one, let's just do that only, yep, okay, now we have a poor shaped stem, so we want to get that more in a rectangular, and as you can see, this is the center, so bring that up a bit, bring that down a bit, Okay, now we want to fiddle with the little bits here, so we're going to make sure that these two are the same length, these two are the same length. And what I'm doing there, by the way, is pressing scale, which is S and then Z to choose the Z axis, which is this blue line here. Then I'm pressing zero to make sure that the vertices are both in line with each other. <laughs> it does help out a lot. Okay, so. That should now be giving us, apart from this one here, a bit of an angled look. Uh, 
This one here. It's a bit of a weird arch. That's sort of arch down the bottom, not the top. So what I can do there is just bring it down. In fact, I'm going to show you an even easier way because that's just annoying me how ugly it is. Okay, so let me just go back. Right, my cursor will be at the center, which is this point. If it's not, just press Shift and S and click cursor to center. Then press Shift and A, add a mesh. Go down to cylinder and press R for rotate, Y, and then 90. And it'll rotate in that degrees. Now what we want to do is place this relatively here. And we know the bottom is there. So now what we're going to do is add another modifier. Boolean, third one down. Make sure it's at the top. I'm going to interselect it with the cylinder. And then we're going to choose difference. Once that's done, apply it and delete that. And now we should have a perfect cylinder shape. Sorry. As you can see, it is. I find that using the Boolean 2 does sort of have a lot of drawbacks to it. But we can get through it because we can retopologize this anyway. It's really that bad. The last one here is we're just gonna Okay, now that we have this done, I'm gonna give it a bloody edge split and then we're gonna decimate it because this is really the topology on it is annoying me at the moment. So we're gonna just get it relatively low. Yeah, that's relatively low. Actually, do you know what? Screw it, let's just go back. Horrible. Okay, so next thing I'm going to want to do is go to the mirror modifier, let's get edge split back in if you haven't already, and we're going to mirror it on the x axis. So now we have two, and we're not going to save it, we're just going to mirror it. Okay, now once it's mirrored, we're then going to add a box cube, sorry, and Five and seven to get in the top view. Five is to go in the orthographic view. Then we're going to add the planks here. It's one of about this thick and about this thick. Now there's two ways you can do this. You can individually sort of bring them onto it, or you could do what I'm going to do, which will be easier for me. I'm going to add a curve path. Now what we're going to do is, in edit mode, bring it up to the front, rotate it 90 degrees. So that way all the arrows are pointing away from the plank. Then I'm going to apply the rotation to scale. And now with my plank, I'm going to add a curve modifier and curve it across the nose path. Right. Now, an array modifier, bring it away. Now let's just see if this uh, works. No, 
looks not right. Look. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so now what we're going to do is. Now this first one comes sort of down here. So we want to. Right click on the left and the right vertice for this curve and then press W. When you do that, it will come up with this option and you want to click subdivide, which will give you a new point. So I'm going to do that again here. Let's subdivide it. So I still have that sort of bend at the front now. I'm going to do it again because it's really not. Here we go. Then there, bring that down. Now, with this modifier that I'm using here. Can decide to leave the bench like this if you decide you like it like that. If not, when you apply it, you can delete the ones that you don't want. Now, the reason I haven't applied it yet is because, as you can see, there is also these little bolts. So, with this enabled, we can now add our bolts. So we press right-click on the top face. I'm really sorry if I'm. Being a bit too bad, these are like the first types of tutorials I'm doing, so it will take me a while to get into the process. Plus, I'm a guy, so I can't really multitask. Anyway, right click on the top face by going into this mode here, which is face selection mode, which is this is edge selection and this is vertice selection, and this is face. Right click and press control, uh, shift and S, cursor to selected. I'm going to press shift and A, and let's add a cylinder. And let's turn the vertices down to 22 because it's still going to be pretty big as it is. Okay. Right now, what we're going to do is bring it down to this side. You can see it's hardly that big compared to this anyway. So S, Shift, and Z. Ah, bring it down. It's quite curved, so I think I'm going to use five to go in off graphic view so I can get a good sort of look. And about here, it literally just goes straight in, starts to curve in. Might not be that smooth of a transition. But as you see, now I have the right. Let me just smooth it, add an edge split. As you can see, it's a lot smoother. Uh, let me edit it this way. This is quite annoying. It's not working. There we go. Okay, so again, off graphic mode so I can get into it. And then I want to break it down a bit. Also going to want to duplicate this and bring it over. Now, before we duplicate it, I'm going to add the texture to it because it's a little metal texture. And it's a lot quicker and easier to do it now than it is to do it later. So what we're going to do is go to U, project from view bounds, drag this out here, and this is going to be our UV. Right, we're going to add a metal texture preferably a chrome one there's several different types we can use i am going to use this one ok 
and then what I did there was tab edit mode, press 7 and then 5 so I can get into author mode then U and project from brown, bounds sorry now that will project the the top of it onto this texture and now I can duplicate it no. uh, I'm going to add a material and this one is going to be wood add another material and this one will be metal so that way I can assign the metal material now so I don't have to do it all individually later so now I've pressed D shift and D duplicate I brought it over to the left side so as you can see they're on both sides right now these are a lot bigger all right Um, yeah, that's about right. <coughs> hey, all right. One last thing I'm going to do is bevel the edges, giving that more realism. Shift and B gives a bevel. And now UV projection. Make sure that it's just the plane selected. UP projection from the view. Textures, woods. Now I can even do a burr texture. In fact, I'm going to on this one. Actually, yeah, it's not too bad. Just gotta know what you're doing. Yeah. Okay. So now do the same with the front. I'm gonna go in the face select mode and select these front faces. You projection from view. Rotate it and Okay, now just this side and the other side. Project it. Okay, now that we've got that projected right, we're gonna turn on the modifiers again because I turned them off. And now I'm gonna apply the array modifier. And I'm also going to apply the curve modifier, okay? So now this is a whole set. And then what I'm going to do is take out this. Now, here we go, we have a good sort of a shape. 
texture isn't the same, but we can change that any second. What I do want to do is change that there. Change this one here. Just so that the overall look is always different. It's not too that are the same. And last but not least. Uh, these are different. We're going to add the concrete texture. So again, edit mode, press A to select all. You're going to press U and projection. Go to concrete and let's try a wall, brick wall. That's all right. Yeah, that looks pretty good. We don't always want a clean texture, do we? So now we're going to alt and right click to select all of this face. Use the C to select the rest of this if you can't. U, projection from U, scale it down so it doesn't stretch too much across it. We should have an all right. Say, take these out here. Okay, so this is an okay standard, I, I guess so. Right, so then we have all of it done. Let's apply the mirror. Once we're done, and let's add a, another texture to this and call this one concrete. Now we can apply it all together. Get rid of the curve modifiers, we don't need it anymore. And that is built. So now what we're gonna do is go to textures tab and we're gonna go new image. And we already loaded up the image, so now we're gonna browse some images to be linked and we're gonna collect slip wood. Okay, and we're gonna go into coordinations and UV and then we're gonna go into map and UV map that way. All the UVs that we have laying out here, it will follow these, okay? But we want this color to look the same, I'd assume you do anyway. So I'm just going to play about with the brightness, give it a bit less saturation. A lot less saturation, give it a bit of yellow color. A bit lighter, Get the contrast, that should be alright, it's not perfect, but it will do. Okay, right, so that one selected, I'm going to go to metal, do the same, new image, select from pre, select our metal texture, go to UV, and UV map in the coordinates. Well, that can stay exactly the same. Now, go back to materials, go to concrete, back to texture, do the same thing all over again. So we use the concrete, okay? So now that's done. UV, UV map. Okay, now all of these, if I, if I bake this, this is only a quick bake, so bear with me. If I bake it, by pressing F12, this is what we have. Okay, so you can see textures are fine. Let me put on the ambient occlusion. Let's rebake. 
So as you can see, the wood textures are laying out perfect now. A nice ambient occlusion between it. Ray tracing is perfect. Let's try this one, see if this works a little better than it actually does look a little better, unfortunately. Okay, right. So as you can see, it sort of works. We're going to brighten up the concrete a bit in the materials tab, concrete. Yeah, let's brighten it up to there. Rebake. Okay, so the concrete looks a little better. The metal definitely needs brightening up. So I'm going to brighten that up by a lot. Yeah. Refresh again. F12. Okay, we're getting there. You know, the, the wood still needs to be uh, brighter, less saturated. I'd say turn the contrast down as well. It looks like it's been sanded. It'll do. Okay, right. Now, let's add our cursor back to the center and add a plane. Straight it out. Sort of, uh, stretch it out. Now we're going to turn our resolution up to 2048 by 2048. And now we're going to re-render again. Just so we can see the detail a little clearer. As you can see, we've got the squares. I really want to bevel this, the actual concrete. This is going to be quite an interesting step because of the fact that we had the boolean through. So I'm going to try it anyway. Let's go back to 3D mode. I'm going to hide all of this. Select it all. Uh, Control and L for linked and then hide. And then I'm going to do the same with the nuts. Select all, hide. Okay. Alright, so they're hidden. So we can now work on this geometry. And we're going to just right click, which will take you across it all. Right click and uh, alt and right click, sorry. And it'll select more than one edge at a time. Edge select mode is down here, by the way, in case you didn't see it. I'm sorry, I'm getting carried away again. Now this works the same for UV map, but I've, <coughs> I've learned over the years this works the same as UV mapping. Easiest way to select the faces if you want to UV map from hand. I find it's easier to do it this way. You make a projection of the UV and then you just bake the UV map out onto a predefined one. It's so much quicker and so much easier. You get the textures while you model it as well so you can see how it's going to look. I'm not sure how this is going to bevel. That's the one problem. Fingers crossed it bevels okay, but can't be 100%. Okay, let's do this. Select all these. Get rid of these edges. Deselect and you hold down the middle mouse button, and it right clicks. Okay. One more one we're going to do is just deselect these edges. 
because we don't want to bevel these, we just want to bevel the corners. Make sure it's all selected and then control B. Seen the bevel quite well actually, considering. Okay, right. So we have our bevel. Alt and H to unhide everything. And now what we do is go into this tab here, which is object data, go down to UV maps and click plus. Now we're going to rename this UV map to projection and we're going to rename this to UV map. Okay, so this is going to be the projection map <coughs> and this will be the UV map, as you can see here. Okay, now you can manually unwrap this if you know how. If not, we're just going to press U, small UV unwrap, and then click OK. And what it's going to do is in a blank screen, just click this to close it, in a blank screen it's going to set up a UV map. Now you can either edit this to the way you want it to look, or you can just use the way it is now, which seems pretty okay at the moment. I, I can't really see that much wrong with it. What we're going to do is click new, and let's change this to uh, 2048 by 2048, a 2K texture. Click OK. Now the first thing we're going to want to do is bake our textures onto it. This is the quicker process. This takes several seconds and as you can see the textures are baked. So if I now select my bench and I press uh, Alt and Z you can see the textures are now baked onto here. In fact I don't think metal textures are baked because oh, what the heck? That's a bit weird. I'm going to try and UV unwrap it again. Oh. I don't know, let me try and rebake that. For some reason it's not baking out the actual metal. And here's it again. Oh, it's not really that necessary at the moment. If you really do want to though, we can bring the metal out by just the selected it all, which is here. Okay, so this is the metal and here. So now what we can do is scale this up, select that, scale it back down to here, select that and bring it in. Select up to here, rotate it 90 degrees, bring it into here. Again with this one, so we're going to place it here. Fact, let's move this over here so it's with the other metal. Make it, place it there. Now, if I rebake, it should bake the metal this time. Yep, it has, as you can see, metal's baked. Right, I'm going to save this image to an objects folder. In here, I'm going to save it as concrete bench tutorial and then textures in the texture folder. 
always do that. Okay, and we're going to do C bench A text, which stands for texture. Save that. And then what I'm going to do now is bake the ambient occlusion. So I'm going to bake, bake mode, ambient occlusion, click normalized, and click bake. Now, depending on how fast your computer is, <coughs> depends on how long this will take. Close these and open up. Okay, so we've got the bench open here. Here's the ambient occlusion. So we're going to save that as C bench A AR without the pin on the end. And save that. Now we've got our ambient uh, the texture and the ambient occlusion. What we do is save that onto there. Give it a bit of a blur because normally I use the approximate but it didn't work too well. So we'll blur it out a bit. And you can either add a background or what a lot of game developers do is they blur the backgrounds. So if there's any bleeding, it's not white, it actually is the same texture, just bleed it out onto the background. By doing that you go to filter, blur, give it a certain amount of blur. Gaussian blur. I just bring the radius up every time you redo it. I do about five a set, duplicate, control J, do it again, blur it up. And from here, I'll probably just put all that. And then I'll blur that again. So, as you can see, you know, here's the background. Here's the texture, and here's the ambient occlusion. So we can save that now as a TGA. I'm going to change the text to a diff because it is diffuse, or just put diffuse. Okay, so diffuse, now TGA. Never loses any sort of texture. So here we go. This is the final product with the ambient occlusion and the textures. The two things we can do is Can probably brighten these up again. So if I go to the texture and select the metal, adjustments levels, brighten it. Okay, see if it works. If not, we're gonna do it. See, here you go, you've got a sort of metal now. Well, the next thing we can do, if you want it, you don't have to, is place a moss texture just to give it a little bit of a grunge look. Uh, making moss, here we go. I'll add that there. Save it, see how it comes out. Again, do this from the other side, flip it.
Yes, we now have the leaky moss. Yeah, we're going to go the extra mile. And close it. There we go. On the concrete, we can add some um, damage. I'm trying to find the best ones. Damage plaster. Yeah, okay. That could do. So, add that there. And don't forget these bottoms, they don't show, so we can leave it like that if you really want to. I'm not going, I'm just trying it for now, as you can see. You know, it's a bit damaged. We get down to this one, flip it, and again, flip it down. Okay, so we've got damage. Moss. What else do we want? We want moss on the damage. By doing this one, I think the easier option would be if I just bring it up to have it under the damage. Uh, let me try under first, see how it looks. Okay. It's just starting to look a little good. Do the same thing. Flip it vertically. And it's not damage. One thing I'm going to do is select it like this. Uh, it doesn't come out right. There we go. Okay. So we save that. Okay, so now this is our finished bench. Now, there's a lot more we can do to this. We can add sort of grass clumps around the bottom area and uh, whatnot, but that's you know that's how easy it is to do certain things.